What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to cover the core Python package called shutil, or as some people like to call it, shutil, which is used for high level file operations in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so regarding the pronunciation, I'm going to call it shutil. I'm sure you're going to let me know in the comment section down below if that's the incorrect way of pronouncing it, but I always call it that. So I'm going to continue to do it for this video today. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the package. It's a core Python package, so we don't need to install any external packages here just import shutil and then we can go through the functionality. So in this video today, I want to cover the different things that we can do with this package. It's a very fundamental package. So it's a beginner friendly video. And I just want to show you the different functions. Of course, we're not going to cover absolutely everything because there's some uh, pretty advanced things that we can do with this as well. We can register, for example, uh, custom archive types and stuff like that. We're not going to cover all of this. I'm going to go through the basic things that you can do with shutil so that you know how and when to use this package. And we're going to start with a very simple thing that we can do, which is copy a file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new file here, uh, which I'm going to call first.txt, for example. And here I'm going to have some text, hello world, I'm going to save this, I'm going to close this. And then with shutil, I can now copy this file to a different direction. So I can say shutil.copy, I can specify a source path, this doesn't have to be just a file name, it can also be a path to a specific um, to a specific file. And then I can also specify another path to the new destination, which is going to be second.txt in this case. And it's quite simple, I run this, I get a second file, second txt. So that's quite simple, we can do the same thing now with directories. However, we cannot just go ahead and say, shu to copy, and then directory directory, uh, we have to use a different function, namely the copy tree function. So copy tree, and then I can define or I can create a directory, let's call this uh, source directory, and then I can have here the two text files, I can copy them into the source directory. And now I can say I want to get from source dear to destination dear, for example. And when I do that, you can see I create a new directory which has these two files in it. So that's also quite simple. Now, one thing that's a little bit more advanced, even though I don't want to call it advanced, it's a little bit more uh, customized is you can ignore specific files. So let's say I have a bunch of files here and I want to have a rule for which files to ignore when copying the directory. What I can do is I can define a function that uh, defines and it has to be a function, we cannot just pass a list it has to be a function that takes a directory and files and then we can um, return a list and this list is basically the files that we want to ignore. So I'm going to define a function, ignore specific files, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, you got to have a parameter directory, and you got to have a parameter of files. And then what you do basically is you return a collection, a list of files that you want to not copy. So a very simple thing to do in our case is to just say f for f in files if f is equal to uh, first dot txt. That's a very, very basic thing now, because that would basically say we ignore this file when copying the, uh, the, the directory. So I can delete this again here. And I can call the function um, shutil dot copy tree again from source directory to destination directory. And now I'm going to pass ignore equals and I can pass a function now as a first entity. So not by calling it, but by just specifying the function. And this is going to ignore this specific file. So now we're going to see I only have this file copied in here. And this is of course, useful not for excluding individual files, but for excluding, for example, patterns exclude all the files. Um, so for example, what I could do is I could say f ends with and then I can specify a file type. So ignore all the txt files. Or maybe I have a certain pattern that says, okay, um, I have some invoices, so I can say invoice in F. So I want to have all the files copied except for those where invoice occurs in the file name, something like that. So you can define your own rules. The only thing you need to have is a function, the function takes directory and files as parameters. And then you return a list with the files that you want to ignore, not the files that you want to keep. This is important. Um, 
All right, so that's a little bit more customized here. What we can also do is we can move and move, of course, uh, is just the same as copy, but the first file, the initial file, the source file um, disappears. So we just move it somewhere else. Uh, let me just for this delete this again and get at least one file out of here. First txt. Now I can just say shutil dot move and I can get the first txt file. I can move it to another file third.txt, for example, this is basically just going to rename it. But of course, I can also go ahead and say third txt, I now want to move it to the directory here, which is source dear, and then let's call it first txt again. Um, there you go. So this is how you move a file using SHU tool. Um, a very simple thing that we can also do just some basic stuff here again, is we can remove a tree, we can remove a directory just uh, source directory. And then when I run this, the directory is gone. So that's also quite simple. And by the way, these are things that are um, not as easily done with OS, sometimes you cannot do them with OS at all. Um, so shutil is the way to go here. Um, another thing which is more about getting information is you can get the total disk usage of a specific device off a specific uh, path. And uh, what you do here is you get three return values from a function that we're going to use here in a second, it's going to be total the total space that is available, the used space and the free space. And this is going to be the result of shutil uh, disk usage, and then we just specify uh, on Linux systems slash to get the current uh, root path. Then of course, you need to print that total used free. And then you get the bytes uh, that are total used and free. Um, yeah, that's basically it. And you can do that also for different paths here. So if you have a, a USB flash drive, you can also uh, specify the path here and get these for uh, this information from there as well. Now, one thing that's very interesting is and this can be useful for specific use cases, uh, is you can copy the metadata of files. So for example, if I create a file here right now, um, one dot txt, let's say, hello world is, um, is uh, the name. Now I have certain metadata here in the properties. So I have accessed modified created, let's just focus on this now. Um, so the last time this file or, or maybe the this file was created uh, Sunday, December 10th, and then this time here, which is not going to be the time of a second file that I create. So let's go ahead, create a second file, second.txt, same content. Uh, what will happen here is when I right click the file, you're going to see it has a different time. So it's going to have uh, 3745. This one has uh, 3715. Now, if I want to take the content of this or the metadata of this file and paste it in here, I can do that with a command. And actually, I should probably change the content of this file. So you can see that the content is actually not being changed. So I can say, hi. So this file here has the content, hello world, this file here has the content, uh, hi, and they have different metadata. So what I can do now is I can say, shutil copy stat. And then I can say, one txt, second txt. And when I run this, you're going to see. So now you can see when I open the file, I still have the content high. And when I right click it and go to properties, you can see that now I have uh, the data here, the metadata copied from the first text file. So this is a function we can use to copy the metadata without copying necessarily the content. And I think that there's actually a function uh, copy to I think it's uh, called where you copy the content and the metadata. So you can look it up. I'm not sure if that's exactly what it does. Um, another thing that we can do is we can change the ownership of the file. So what I can do is I can open up a terminal, I can navigate to this direction here. Um, and if I run the LL command, you can see that I own all these files. Um, what I can do now here is I can say shutil change owner, so ch own, and I can change the owner of a specific directory or file, let's go with one txt, I can change the owner to the following user root, for example. Now for this one, I'm going to need root privileges, I'm not going to be able to run this uh, like this, you can see it says um, operation not permitted. But if I run this with a sudo, at least on Linux, then this is going to work, I just have to provide my password. And then um, 
it's done. And when I run ll again, you can see that this file is now owned by root. So that's nice. Uh, this is a command that is also uh, interesting. We can also change this back, of course, to neural nine. And then I'm going to have the same ownership again. So that's also kind of useful. Uh, what's also interesting is that we can get the path of a certain keyword. So if I use Python three, I can run my terminal, I can say Python three, this is an executable that I'm running. Now, if I want to know where this Python three actually is on Linux, what I do is I say which, so which Python three, and it gives me basically the path to this particular Python version that I'm using here. I can do the same thing here with shutil, I can say shutil, which and I can say Python three, I can print the result. And now you can see in this case, I get a different executable because here I'm using a different Python um, binary that I'm using in a terminal, as it seems. And yeah, you can do that for different executables as well, not just for Python. Um, all right. And then last but not least, I want to show you an interesting feature. And this is one that you can go into more detail if you want to, maybe I can make a separate video for this as well. Uh, which is unpacking and creating archives. And there are some default types supported, but you can also go and create your own custom uh, unpacking functions that you can then feed into or add as a uh, function to SHU tool. Whether you want to do that or not is up to you, but it's possible. So what we can do here is we can say, let's create a directory here, my files, and let's copy these two files into this directory here. What I can do now is I can say shutil dot um, make archive and I can just say the archive name shall be something like um, my archive. And then I want to specify what kind of archive I want to have. I want to have a zip archive for now. Um, and I also want to uh, specify which files I want to create an archive from. And for this, I'm going to just pass my files, which is the directory. And then when I run this, you can see I have this my archives zip. If I open it here, you can see it contains these two files. Um, and then of course, what I can do is I can just go and say shutil unpack archive, and I just have to specify my archive zip and path where I want to extract this unpacked dir. And then I can run this and you can see I get the files in here. So you can do that by default. And you can also display what kind of options you have here. So you can say shutil dot get archive format and also get unpack formats to see what's possible here. So you can see by default, you have uh, bzip2, gzip, you have tar, you have um, xz and you have zip to create archives. And then you have these here, um, which are, are they the same? I think they're the same, right? Uh, for unpacking. And if you want to add something else, again, you can, uh, I think there's the function. Uh, was it register archive format, which I'm not going to cover now, but there is this function, you can look it up. And if you want to have a video about this, let me know in the comment section down below. I think this goes a little bit uh, too far here. But yeah, this is how you use the shutil package in Python, this is a useful package, especially when you combine it with OS and maybe with something like sub process to run command line. Um, yeah, commands, terminal commands. This is what you usually want to use when you and maybe you want to combine it with the glob package. So when you work with files and with archives and with directories and stuff like that with iterating over files and paths and stuff like that, those are the packages that you want to use. And in this video, we covered shutil. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.